God for Billy Fields. Amen. For writing such great songs. Hallelujah. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> my, my, my. You didn't have to wait for him to say it was finished before they felt the fear. Amen. Oh no, he's made it to the cross. Hallelujah. The enemy didn't want him to make it to the cross. Amen. Wanted to kill him before that time. Hallelujah. Thank God he made it to the cross. Amen. And finished that which he was commissioned to do, or that which he volunteered to do Hallelujah. before the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This ain't something he just one day, well, I think, you know, I'll decide today. This is something he decided a long, long time ago Amen. when he said, Father, I will go. Amen. I'll be the sacrifice that mankind needs to keep them from going to a devil's hell. <clears throat> Hallelujah. My, my, my. Ephesians, the third, I'm, I'm sorry, Ephesians, the second chapter this morning. <clears throat> Over the last few weeks, we have talked about the face of forgiveness. We have talked about the face of God. Amen. Hallelujah. When we talked about forgiveness, we talked about how important forgiveness is for us. Not just us, for those, but for those that we forgive. And then we learned how important it is for those who watch your life. Amen. Hallelujah. To see how you react towards people. To see if you hold grudges. And see if you hold unforgiveness toward people. So we've seen how important it is for us and others. And we've seen how it is important for your witness for the Lord. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Then last week we talked about how that you're supposed to act like your daddy. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. I'm sure Brother Bill heard more than once while his kids were growing up. He heard his sister Nancy say, you act just like your daddy. But she probably didn't mean that in a good way. Amen. They were probably being mean and acting up. Amen. Hallelujah. And I said, I wish today that people would look at us and say, you act just like your daddy. Amen. Talking about our Heavenly Father. Praise the Lord. The compassion I see it must be from your daddy's side of the family. Amen. Hallelujah. The love that I see must be, my, 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 from the nature of your father that is shining through you. Hallelujah. My, my, my. They might not be sermons that make you jump the pew, but honey, if you will take them and if you will feed upon them, they will put meat on your bones. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not, uh, see, once you get saved, that ain't all there is to it. Amen. Unless you want to just wander around in spiritual diapers your whole <laughs> spiritual life. There is a growing up in God. Amen. Most of the church don't know it because most of them are wandering around in their poopy diapers sucking on their thumb. Amen. Hallelujah. But there is a growing up in God to be found. Hallelujah. And our foundational scriptures, one of them that we've been using over the last few weeks, Ephesians 2 and 2, the Apostle Paul talking to save people and talking to them about the way that they used to be before they knew Jesus. He said, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world. That means that now you're not supposed to be walking according to the course of the world. He said, you used to. Amen? Yeah. You used to be this way. You used to walk according to the course of the world. You used to walk according to the prince of the power of the air. We know who that is. Slewfoot himself. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So he's talking about those that are saved and those that are not saved. And he's talking about how disobedience works in the life of those that don't know Jesus. And he's trying to teach us how it ain't supposed to work in our life today. Amen. The Bible says that disobedience, amen, it, rebellion is the same as witchcraft. And it says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. Our conversation used to be different. Amen. Our conversation in times past in the lusts of the flesh. See, used to, whenever you hit your finger with that hammer, your conversation was different than it is today. Or it's supposed to be. Used to, whenever I would hang around, I was just a little snotty-nosed kid, and I'd watch Brother Bill work on those cars, you know. And my goodness, he'd be out there until midnight or after with a light hanging, you know, and he'd be out there working under some old car. And when he hit his hand with the, you know, a tool or he bumped something, he didn't say, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He used some different words then than he uses now. Amen. 
But I hung around him then just watching, you know, and he was one of my heroes. Amen. Hallelujah. Still is. He don't know it. Amen. <clears throat> but I would hear him say those words, you know, and then after he got born again and after he got, you know, him and Jesus got their own thing going. I've been around him, you know, not too far back where he was working on something and things didn't go just right. And I didn't hear him use the same words. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. You ought not be using the same words today that you used to. Your conversation is supposed to be different today than it used to be. Amen. The jokes you tell today ain't supposed to be like the jokes you used to tell. The jokes you laugh at today ain't supposed to be like the jokes that you used to laugh at. Amen? Your conversation is supposed to be different. Yes, amen. amen? Babies, the way babies talk and the way adults talk is two different things. When you're a babe, you know you talk one way. Whenever you grow up, you talk a different way. Paul said, when I was a baby, I played with childish things. Amen? I played with my toys. I was a baby. But when I grew up, I put that stuff away. Yes, now it's time, church, if you're born again, it's time to put that stuff away. Amen. I've heard people supposed to have been saved for 40 years and words come out of their mouth and I thought, you need somebody to take a bar of soap and wash your mouth out. Amen. Our conversation is supposed to be different today than it used to be. Amen. Well, I could preach on conversation all day long. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> what, what, what is the one time in the Bible when you find a disciple trying to convince people that he wasn't a disciple. What was he doing? Cussing. Read it over there. They came to Peter. They said, you're one of them. He said, no, I ain't. He started cussing just to prove that he wasn't. So if you want to put doubt in somebody's mind whether you know Jesus or not, just go cussing a blue streak. Yeah. Amen? No. I know some preachers that still cuss. My goodness. Makes me wonder. Amen? It'll make the world wonder. And that's what we've been talking about. We ain't just talking about you growing up for your own benefit, but we're talking about a world that watch it. They look for something that they don't have, Brother Sleese. They long for something, Brother Bill, that they can't find in Jack Daniels. They long for something that they can't find in a pill bottle because they've tried that stuff and it leaves them empty and it leaves them without hope. So they watch you because they think, well, you know, he goes to church and he does this and maybe he's got maybe he's really got something. And you might have them thinking you do till you start acting up. Then they begin to wonder, Sister Nancy, whether you've really got what you claim you have or not. I told you before, most of the time we can't get the world in here because they've seen what most Christians got and they don't want it. But if you'll begin to show them the nature of your Father, if you'll begin to show them forgiveness instead of unforgiveness, if you'll begin to show them love instead of hatred, if you'll begin to show them peace and compassion instead of a judgmental, hypocritical attitude that most of the church has, if we will begin to show them that, they will begin to take notice and think something different about them people. There's something they got that I don't have that I want. You know, sometimes you see people and they've got something that you don't have and you don't want it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Sometimes, Brother Bill, you see somebody and they got something and you want to stay as far away as you can so you don't catch it. Yeah. But I want them to see what I got. I want them to see Jesus shining through me. I want them to see the light of the love of God shining in my life. So much so... That they want what I got. Amen? <clears throat> Listen to this. So your conversation used to be when the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. That used to be the way, I mean, that's the way we used to be. The only thing we have in mind, had in mind at the time, was pleasing ourselves. Ain't supposed to be that way no more. Amen? Amen? That attitude of my forward no more, no more is supposed to have went out the door. Right. Amen? Amen? Now it's like Brother Sleason, I like what he said this morning. Now not only do you worry about Lot, but you worry about all of those that are in there with him, amen? Right. That are deceived and that die in the judgment of God and wind up in hell. And all of the rejoicing, yes, that Lot got out, but what about some of the weeping for those that didn't? 
People are lost and undone and going to hell without God today. And we need a burden for souls like we've never had before. Amen. Amen. And it says, and we're by nature, I'm in the last part of verse 3, talking about us, we us's, mm -hmm. we're by nature children of wrath. Amen. It's in your nature to get angry. But it ain't in God's. Amen. It's in your nature to want to get even. But that ain't the nature that the Father gave you. It's in your nature to want to give somebody a piece of your mind. But that ain't in the nature that the Father gave you. Amen? Oh, it must be pine corn this morning. Everybody got quiet. It's in your own stinking, filthy nature to tell somebody off. It's in your old nature this morning not to turn the other cheek, but to look for a gun when somebody does you wrong. Amen. And Paul said, you used to be this way. Holding grudges. Arguing. Can't get along. Fussing and fighting and cussing. That's the way you used to be. Oh, somebody said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. The way you used to be, that's the way it still is in my house. Well, then Jesus needs to come take a man and have a visit. Amen. Because He will bring peace where there was no peace. He will bring joy where there was no joy. Paul tells them over there, after salvation in Colossians, the third chapter in the 13th verse, and we just use this as one of our foundational Scriptures. There are many, many, many Scriptures to go along these lines. But this is the one the Lord singled out and has been having us use. He's talking to people who are born again. You know, we read over there in Ephesians how you used to be, Sister Nancy, but this is how you are now. Forbearing one another, Colossians 3 and 13. Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, so also do ye. Now see, that's the nature of our Father. <clears throat> Paul tells us over here, in Ephesians, what our old nature, our old carnal sin nature is, then He tells us what the nature of Jesus Christ is. Amen? Jesus looked at him one time and He said, You have heard an eye for an eye. But I say that if someone smites you on one cheek, turn the other cheek to them. Amen? I say forgive your enemies. Do good to those that persecute you. Amen? Pray for those that despitefully use you. The eye for an eye thing, that was in the law. I've came with something better than what the law had to offer you. Amen? You remember we've studied before over there and it says, though I, though I can speak with the tongues of angels and though I have all of these different things, it says, but if I don't have love, if I don't have charity, I don't have nothing. I'm a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. Amen? I have nothing. That's the way the world looks at the church. You can have your religious organizations. You can have your religious form down pat. You can have the dress. You can have the walk. But, and you, you can have the talk. But if you do not have that, something different in your everyday life, if you do not show forth the fruit of the Spirit this morning, the world don't want what you got. And Jesus said, i got something better than the law. No longer an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. Amen? But forgive those that do wrong to you. No longer calling fire down from heaven, but saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about forgiving people. We talked about how it affected Jacob whenever he met Esau and Esau had forgiven him. We talked about how it affected